We are about halfway through Season of the Hunt, and for those of us who like to torture ourselves, we have played our fair share of the current PvP sandbox. It was fairly predictable that hand cannons were going to be a popular weapon type to use due to their archetype change and their overall increase in effectiveness. But are there some other weapons that have also been categorized as being the meta? Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Man of Cole, and today, let's talk about the PvP weapon meta in Beyond Light. So as of the making of this video, we have about 30 days left in Season of the Hunt. And it's usually at this time where we really start to get a good understanding of what the weapon meta has become. We all know Stasis is running rampant in PvP, but I think that alone could be a separate video. Today, we're just going to talk about weapons specifically. Now, my experience in the Crucible and what I use or what I get killed by can be very different than someone else's. So my goal was to make the information in this video as data driven as I could. Is it data? Data? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm going to say it both ways in this whole video. Anyways, so one way I like to get a pretty unbiased understanding of what the weapon meta may look like is going back and taking a look at the most used weapons in Trials of Osiris for the past few weeks. Ideally, we would have had more than just two weeks of Trials data to look at and help us determine what the meta is. So we're going to have to work with what we got. There's a website called Destiny Trials Report that shows all kinds of stats that you can look up about yourself or other guardians regarding KD ratio, win percentage, how many times they've been flawless, etc. They have also incorporated something on their website that allows you to go back to past weeks of trials and see which weapons had the most kills, how many players went flawless that weekend, how many total players played that weekend, and a few other things. Now, with trials only having been out for two weeks as of the making of this video, we won't get to see any real significant trends, but I'd still like to look at the top 10 weapons that had the most kills and trials across all platforms combined. PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and yes, even Stadia. Among the top 10 weapons with the most kills and trials every week, there were eight that stayed on the list for both weeks. Those weapons were Felwinter's Lie, Adored, The Steady Hand, Sturm, Crimson, Ace of Spades, Dire Promise, and the Shotgun, 7th Seraph CQC-12. On your screen right now is an Excel spreadsheet that I created showcasing which weapons ranked in which spot in terms of kills for that specific Trials weekend. On the left you will see the specified week and date of Trials, and on top you can obviously see the 8 different weapons. Under each weapon you will see where it ranked in kills during that corresponding week. 1 obviously meaning it ranked 1st, 2 meaning it ranked 2nd, you get the point. Now the average won't matter a ton here because obviously we only had 2 weeks, so that number is going to be a little skewed. But what I would like to take a look at is how many kills each of these weapons got, and that can really tell us the volume at which people were using each of these weapons. On your screen right now are the weapon kill totals for each of the first two weeks of Trials during Beyond Light. And boy, does this tell us a lot. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure to click the red subscribe button right underneath this video. It's a free way to support the channel, and we're almost at 1,200 subscribers. So I would greatly appreciate any of you that click the subscribe button. So the first thing I wanted to address, and probably the most obvious piece of data that we have here, is the oversaturation of Felwinter's Lie. Now, there are a few points I wanted to bring up regarding Felwinter's, and the first is that this clearly shows a lack of diversity in viable shotguns, snipers, or any special weapons in high-end PvP for that matter. I mean, Felwinter's had more kills by itself than the next two weapons combined. And compared to the other shotgun on this list, it was just totally in a league of its own. The second point I wanted to make is probably more of a hope than anything, but since our weapon sandbox was basically cut in half with what we can and can't use in light level based activities, that with time, these weapon kill charts will look a little more diverse than they currently do with the introduction of more loot to our usable loot pool. Again, this is just my wishful thinking, but I think that with the following seasons, we could see a little bit more of a shift in some of these numbers. The next thing I wanted to talk about with regards to this kills chart is the fact that 120 hand cannons seem to be much more prominent than 140s at this moment in time. I have two theories as to why this could be, and none of them have to do with their effectiveness in PvP. Because according to Mercules and his massive weapons breakdown spreadsheet, 120s actually have a slower optimal time to kill than 140s do. So with that information, it seems kind of silly that a majority of the player base would use a weapon that kills slower rather than a weapon that kills faster, right? Now that's not to say that 120s shouldn't be used more than 140s in PvP, 
because they're obviously still very good. That's where my two theories come in. The first theory is that more people are using 120 hand cannons because of their novelty more than their effectiveness. What I mean by this is that Destiny players tend to gravitate towards the weapons or weapon types that Bungie has recently given a little sandbox love to. Just think back to last season with auto rifles. Suros, Monte Carlo, Hardlight, Gnawing Hunger were all very prominent in the PvP sandbox. Granted, Gnawing Hunger was far and above the strongest primary in PvP, but now this season, auto rifles are nowhere to be seen on any of these lists, and that's largely in part to Bungie having tweaked both auto rifles and hand cannons the way that they did. The novelty of 120s now being even remotely usable is likely the largest reason why people are using them more than 140s. My second theory is actually more dialed into how many options for each weapon archetype there are. As of the making of this video, the only 120s that are currently obtainable and usable are the Steady Hand, which is from Iron Banner, True Prophecy, which is no longer obtainable, Krimmel's Dagger, which is also no longer obtainable, and Sturm. That's it. Four options and only two of them that you can even still obtain. Whereas for 140 options, we have seven, three of which are exotics, so they will never be sunset, and another four that are still obtainable from the current loot pool. So just based on the amount of available options that people who like using 140s have, it's significantly spreading out these kill totals across all these options. So obviously some of these trends will change from week to week, but with the information that we have right now, what are some of the things that we can currently conclude? First and foremost, hand cannons seem to be the clear cut meta. Now that does not mean that it is exclusively a hand cannon meta meaning it's not just hand cannons that are good right now. I mean, we have high impact pulse rifles like Cold Denial and No Time to Explain that can absolutely shred. 600 RPM auto rifles are still very effective and even sidearms are still a very good option. In one of my recent videos, I talked about some of the non-meta weapons that are actually really good in PVP. I'll put a link to that video in the description for you guys if you wanna check it out. But in that video, I talked about how sidearms are a very solid option to pair with sniping especially on maps that may not have long sight lines. The new sidearm from Barracks, High Albedo, is one of those three burst sidearms that can roll with some solid perks. If full auto is your thing, I would highly suggest trying to grind for one of these with full auto. It really maximizes the time to kill for this sidearm. So I mention this in a lot of my videos, but there's a reason why I say it all the time. And that is that this current weapon sandbox, keyword being weapon, is the best and most diverse sandbox we have ever had in Destiny 2. And there are a lot of weapons that just feel really good to use, which is very reassuring for the direction of PvP. If you found anything useful in this video, again, make sure to click the red subscribe button right under this video as it's a free way to support the channel. I'd greatly appreciate your support. Also, I made a video recently on some different non-meta weapons that are very strong in PvP, so if you're looking for some new weapons to try out, Go check out that video. The link should be on your screen shortly. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at manofcoal underscore. The links to all of my socials are in the description box down below. Thank you all very much for watching. A positive rating is always appreciated. And as always, we'll see ya.